Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Overseers. My name is Roy Elias and I'm joined once again by my co-hosts Nightwing and 1HP. And in this episode, we'll be reviewing the Boston Uprising roster for Season 4 of the Overwatch League. Um, so, without further ado, let me quickly go over how we're going to do this. And that's go over the tanks first, then the DPS, then the supports, and then the coaching staff or, and the GM if we have any points to add. Um, so yeah, are you guys all set for this episode? Yes, sir. Yeah, totally, yeah. Alright then. Let's jump into the tank line, which is Fusions and Stan 1 on main tank and Punk on off tank. Um, so really uh, interesting, a really interesting pickup by the Uprising in Stan 1. Uh, he's actually coming in from the Shanghai Dragons after being sort of um, benched for Fearless for most of the season last year. Uh, but I think he's a really, really good main tank and he's, uh, I think, criminally underrated uh, because he he plays a really good uh, ball. Uh, overall, I think in the league, he could be a really good ball player. Uh, he played a pretty good hog as well in the playoffs last year when Fearless couldn't pick up that hero. Um, I think his Orisha is pretty good as well. Um, according to Deepa, who has been reviewing the, the league's rosters himself on his channel, um, he he plays a really sick monkey. Uh, so I think he's overall a versatile and underrated main tank player and he could be uh, like just the main tank Boston needs after uh, you know being having sort of the main tank role be a letdown for the past couple of years. Because I honestly think Fusions is at this point bottom tier, right? And I feel bad for him because he was a, a really uh, good player when he came into the league. But he didn't see much success Although he was always started for being a really good leader, uh, but yeah, that's that's my those are my thoughts on the main tank situation. But I let you guys pitch in and share your thoughts. I pretty much agree. I think Stand One is uh, someone that the team can kind of work around better than Fusions, at least. Um, he's definitely a higher higher caliber of player than Fusions, and while he was benched uh, over benched under fearless because uh, fearless was just that good uh, on shanghai um i think sanwan can put up a decent performance uh, at boston i think fusions has been as you said disappointing apart from that uh, brief stint he had in the world cup in 29 2019 was it 2018 yeah the the goats world cup the upset over um, USA. Yeah, apart from that, he's just kind of been disappointing. Um, I think Stand One can bring a new look and help some help the team uh, not work around a Ryan One trick. I think that's that's basically <laughs> the gist of it. I, I think Stand One is more flexible and should be better for the team. One yeah, it hurts me. Yeah, it hurts me to see fusions just kind of fizzle out. Just such a, I mean, you look back, uh, like I think said about the World Cup where I first sort of got into the uh, entire main fray, and everyone was just sort of happy to see uh, another, like probably one of the first decent EU main tanks since you know the early two years of Overwatch and it's it's a shame really because I've I, I used to like both his Reinhardt and Winston play and as long as someone has those two covered you don't really expect more from a main tank and Stan 1 on the other hand very versatile and it it's nobody's fault that he was benched most of last season fearless is a god you you can't just expect him to be performing so so well and then you know have someone else just come and take his place for no reason no matter how good they are it's the same as and why excel in the first season playing mano even though yanis was quite good but you just sometimes you just have to let people sit or for example when gesture and uh you know um fisher what's his name uh yeah fisher sorry i forgot his name for some reason yeah fisher and gesture being on the same team Probably the most scary thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Imagine looking at a roster and you've got Gesture and Fisher. Okay, try uh, two of three best main tanks that have ever been. So, uh, yeah, now it's 
down to stand one probably taking a uh, fusions this place but we've also got quite quite a few players who are predominantly uh english speaking at least two in punk and color x so we might just see fusion stay and it it might be more composition based or they might center teams around playing certain comps so definitely something interesting uh it's punk who i'm worried about because i i've not known <laughs> anything if much you know about him so more more kind of concerned about the off tank situation because uh, for the full tank or the main tank one it was more of a i mean it's it's an upgrade it's a definite upgrade but it's yeah it's more the off tank uh, position i'm concerned about with them not really having any real backup mm -hmm. yeah because um the only off tank they have is punk like you said right and uh I think overall, based on how he played last year, he, he was one of their better players, but he still got loads to prove because uh, he was he played a good Zarya in my opinion, but and he's also known to play a good Hog and a good Diva, but he's still a relatively unproven quantity coming into the league. So I'm not too high on him because the off tank, uh, the off tank market this year is pretty jacked. And I really don't think Punk can compete with some of the other players um, that we've got, a even in NA. But yeah, that's just my opinion. I don't know if you agree with me, Nightwing, but go on. I think that when Punk came in, you could really see a difference in Boston, even though they were still kind of terrible. Yeah. Um, the kind of uh, comms they were having, even if you looked at the player camps, um, they they seemed a lot more engaged and a lot more excited instead of just completely mentally boomed. Um, I think that that's the kind of uh, energy that a new player obviously gives whenever you uh, add something to a roster. Um, but then over time, that kind of died down. Um, Boston kind of became trash mentally again as well. Mm -hmm. um, maybe Punk can kind of work around that this season maybe they can do something but uh, I mean Punk is never going to be uh, some kind of huge to like absolute top tier off tank uh, but I mean he should be serviceable for the kind of goals that Boston needs to achieve this season which is just to not be the absolute worst team Agreed. Honestly, <laughs> um, I think that uh, obviously there are better choices out there, but considering that uh, how how Kraft uh, that runs Boston and how Huck and all of these guys see the situation, especially since the kind of profitability that um, is kind of going down for esports and Overwatch League, I think they probably won't sign another uh, off tank and they'll probably just stick with Punk, which is fine, I guess. This team just needs to not be the worst. Um, I think Punk can work into that role fine. That's pretty much it. Uh, main tank situation, I would expect and want to be played over fusions. Punk is just Punk. <laughs> I mean, the tank line, it, it's there. That's the best thing I can say about them. Uh, I mean, even though stand one, I mean, is promising. Overall, I think the tank line is going to be still below average, I would assume. Yeah, could be. Average or below average, I think, is a fair estimate of that. Uh, but yeah, let's then talk about the DPS players. And uh, they've the, the Uprising have currently got four DPS players, which is good job, Boston, because you finally realized that you had flexibility issues on the damage line. Uh, but yeah, they've got IM37, Valentine, Soon, and Color Hex. Uh, so let's first talk about the DPS they've carried over from last year, right? And that's Color Hex. And um, I know a lot of people say he's a pretty, pretty bottom tier player. And I agree for the most part because in the league he's not been that impressive. I think in parts, probably his best performances, in my opinion, were on Echo because I watched him play a lot on the replay viewer. And that that's mostly because of the great mechanical skill he's got. Um, but I don't think he fits into Boston's structure well enough, right? Because um, overall, I think mechanically he's really talented because he, he's just popping off on ladder even if you watch his streams. But f for the same reason that he's he's not really fitting into this team structure, I don't think he's doing well on this team. And retaining him is 
probably not the best move for Boston. Uh, but do you guys agree in that aspect, or do you have a, a different view? I think One HP has some opinions about color hex. Oh yeah, big time. So it's it's just I don't know. You're seeing every team come up with at least one person who either has explosive potential or is just uh, a well-established monster. And with Boston, I think Valentine is my only hope, really, right now this season, because we've seen enough from Color Hex, and what it shows is that it's got decent game sense. He's, the positioning's almost always impeccable, but I never, you know, you never consistently see his uh, mechanical skills show up, something that's very, very required in his role very very important rather and uh at the end of the day i just don't want him drowned out by someone else yet again and then you know considering the the player pickups they've made in faith valentine and you know uh i think it was uh another person who was it so uh, i'm 37 sorry coming from wgs phoenix but and it's it's like a pre-established synergy thing they're going for again and I think going forward, we're going to have to expect from them uh, two different composition-based uh, lineups where I'm sure Color Hex will be paired with... Uh, I mean, he cannot really be paired with Soon anyway unless uh, they, they have something crazy in mind. But I can definitely see uh, Valentine and I'm 37 going in together and Valentine and Color Hex going in together. Uh, I'm not sure where soon comes in. Great experience, probably one one of the best early in game traces. Still is super consistent and can cause anyone to see nine magically. But <laughs> other than that, I can't say much for soon because you know Terence. At the end of the day, you're you're old now <laughs> from esports standards and uh, great great little stint with Paris where people got to learn a lot from him. But Right now, my problem is that I don't see a threat other than uh, Valentine, who is unproven. Mm -hmm. Nightwing, uh, I think you can share your thoughts first and then I'll go. Okay. On, on the entire Divas line? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, I think Color Hex is probably going to be the least fielded DPS. I mean... He has been consistently disappointing. There's nothing really much to say about him. I think he's more of just a backup. They've had him on a long-term contract, I will assume. Um, and yeah, I mean, he's just someone that exists, I guess. Um, what's exciting is probably Valentine and Soon. That's the DPS lineup I would expect um, much more than even I am 37. I think Soon has a ton of experience. He has he has a lot of good knowledge about the game he's he really knows how to find a place for himself um, not only as a mechanically skilled player even if he's not maybe at the top tier like he used to um i think his gameplay on the sombra for example is quite exceptional i think that uh, uh, apart from maybe the absolute best sombras like hisu and uh, hisu and this guy Dante, lip, maybe yeah hisu Dante lip I think soon is almost there, and uh, for a team like Boston, which is not really aiming for the very, very top, um, they just need to, like I said, not be the worst. I think soon is someone that can help them achieve that goal. Um, yeah, can I can I quickly add something? Speaking of soon, I just realized that I'd rather see him in the you know Widowmaker Cree slash Tracer role over Color X, and that speaks a lot for Color X as a person. Or a pickup that stayed with them so long, so I it's it's kind of sad. It's getting sad now. <laughs> and uh, for for I am thirty seven, he could very well fill those roles, but I think he should have never really left the league in the first place. It was kind of sad for him. But right now, it's like both of them to me are so much more appealing than Color X. It's just sad now. I'm not too excited about I am thirty seven personally. I think while he did have a stint with uh, WGS Phoenix, uh, it's just not a player that I'm particularly excited about. I, I think I would even put soon over uh, the hit scan role over I'm 37, unless I'm 37 proves himself to be some kind of exceptionally 
better player than Soon because I think Soon is a b- more cerebral uh, cerebral cerebral. <laughs> You're welcome. Hello, words. Please. <laughs> um, yeah, Soon is a much more cerebral player, and I think mm. he can really tie the team together a lot better. Um, I don't think that uh, I'm 37 can quite do that. Even though I am 37 is bilingual, so that might help in um, kind of the cross-cultural translation. Um, I think the, the lineup I would expect to see most of the time uh, would probably be Soon and Valentine. I think those are the two best DPS on this team. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Valentine had... Now, Valentine is someone that actually... Uh, based on his WGS Phoenix performance, I would uh, really want to see be fielded all the time. I think he's he's quite good on the, the flex DPS. That, that's pretty much it. I I don't I don't want to see Color Hex fielded honestly. If Boston wants uh, to do their fans any justice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think I would agree for the most part. Valentine. Definitely a great pickup coming in from WGS. Um, his echo play as of late has been really amazing. And I think he will probably be fielded most of the time instead of Color Hex. Uh, I don't think many people have a doubt about that. Um, also agree about I am 37. I'm not too high on him either. I don't think he was that good on Toronto. Um, and even with WGS, uh, I don't think he was a major reason for their success. Uh, you had players like Valentine, naturally, uh, you had Aztec who's joined the Defined. Um, and you also had Gable Shee, right? Gable Shee's WGS, right? Yeah. Um, yes. So, these, I, I feel those were truly the cornerstone for that, that team's success. I am 37, not one of them. Still a good hit scan player, but overall not a, an impressive pickup because I don't think he brings something to the team that. Probably 90% of the other hitscan players on the market couldn't have brought, right? So, I don't I don't know. I think the only reason they picked him up is because Lori recommended him since Lori was with WGS. Um, and also probably because he was like a low-cost pickup, I feel. Um, the actual hitscan, uh, or well, not hitscan, but mostly tracer... Uh, kind of standout player on WGS was Ace, not I'm 37. Uh, yes, yeah. Who I kind of wanted to see in the league, actually. Ace is also really good. Um, I'm 37 was just kind of there to flick heads, I guess, um, as kind of a substitute player, as right. far as I understand. Yeah, because he cannot really play the Tracer. I've seen him play Sombra, and he's not bad at Sombra, but then you've got soon. then why would you even play I'm 37 on Sombra, right? Um, there is no way you play... I'm 37 on Sombra over soon. Exactly. Unless somehow you need soon to play Widow or something. <laughs> um, yeah, so soon, uh, I, I'm I'm pretty sure they're saving I'm 37 for a double hit scan. But if there's let's say a meta where uh, he and Valentine need to communicate a lot with each other, I think that's where he will come in. I could certainly see I'm 37 playing something like a Reaper for the team, right? Because if you're playing let's say a rush comp with Faith and Valentine. You probably want that synergy between the Lucio and the Reaper and so on. Um, if you're playing Sim, that's where you get Soon. <laughs> because I don't think you can say this for a lot of players, but Soon plays a pretty good Sim. Uh, because we saw him playing that hero for uh, Paris quite frequently. That The team loved completely loved running Sim strats on Lee Jung whenever they could. Um, but yeah, he's definitely going to at least be the Tracer Specialist for the team. Uh, even though he's not like overall in the hit scan market, he may just be let's say average or slightly above average. Um, he's one of the better players on this team, so I'm hopeful about his performances at least. Um, and yeah, I, I agree that Valentine and Soon will probably be the should probably be the, be their go-to lineup. Uh, with I'm 37 being there for really special occasions and Kalex being there in case Valentine gets a cold. <laughs> So yeah, Color X being there in case they need a bus driver, maybe. Uh, <laughs> oh my God! Yikes! Oh wait, no, this is in Florida. Never mind. Yikes! <laughs> uh, I I feel bad for that situation. I shouldn't be laughing about it, but yeah. Um, all right. So shall we then talk about the support line? Yeah, sure. 
Uh, so Faith and Myun Wong, that's the support line. The so Faith's coming in once again from WGS. Um, he's formerly played for Global Esports as well. Um, overall, I think uh, based on what I've heard, he's a great shot caller. So he could fill in that leadership role that that Fusions wo- used to fill last year. Um, and he's got synergy with I'm 37 and Valentine. So like I said, if there's a meta where all three of them there has to be great coordination between the dps and the main supports like in the rush comp uh, it's a great pickup at least uh, from that perspective and he's overall a solid and consistent player um probably not the best brig uh since he was like his his brig wasn't that good uh, even on wgs uh but overall i think it, it's a great, great pickup um at least compared to halo and swimmer whom they had last year um, and yeah, I, I'll let you guys speak before we move on to Myung Bong. Want to speak? Yeah, Swimmer for me was just meme potential last year. And uh, yeah, I think it's finally nice to see someone. Uh, I mean, the pre existing synergy, we've said that word or phrase rather too much today, but uh, that coming into play, their coach Lori also, sort of having that under his belt. We can kind of see a trend here, at least with Boston, which is kind of surprising because you're not used to... They, you know, earlier in the first and second season, they used to be touted as having one of the better scouting systems where, well, rest in peace, Dream Casper, but he was still a great player, right? And mm. that's a similar thing we <laughs> expected from uh, Color Hex. Uh, didn't quite play out, but I mean... Picking someone up from the ladder in that respect was still very impressive. And uh, right now, it's uh, just looking like they're finally giving into, you know, having picked up a decent coach and then just uh, finally just taking his advice on how few players with sort of sort of some history between them could finally work out for them because they don't really have another season to just sort of give in to building those sort of relationships within their players. Uh, once again, like, I don't understand what they're trying to do with Fusions and Color X, but uh, good luck to them. And with that respect, Faith, uh, good player in the very least. And uh, when we come to Min Bong, I'll just speak a bit more on it. Yeah, yeah sure. I think Faith is a good player. That's that's pretty much all I can say, honestly. Uh, it's hard to figure out a, a, the kind of work a main support is doing. I haven't watched an insane amount of WGS Phoenix, if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, but he is a player that has performed well on multiple teams. Um, and hopefully he can kind of uh, just peel well for Myanbong. They can be a good support duo. I think mm-hmm. Yun Bong has been completely mentally boomed because of the kind of garbage that he had to deal with last season. Um, hopefully, uh, Faith can be a decent partner to him and not completely let him down on like Halo. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much all I'm hoping from Faith is to not not make poor Myun Bong sad. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, so I think you guys can start us off on Myun Bong actually, where you think he's at and how well you think he's going to do this year. Oh, I quite like Myun Bong actually. Uh, wouldn't really say he's at the very top or anywhere near it, but I think uh, certainly very exciting. Uh, he's shown me some great ton of play, at least in terms of potential. I was just the this slight consistency that i saw from him in terms of uh in many team fights making plays that you wouldn't see coming from him normally because he's not really too flashy anyway but at the same time he was making those plays so i i like that aspect about him uh zen was decent too so i mean primarily anna for me still but at the same time, at least Boston's not stuck with someone you'd call a compromise. I'm glad they kept him because uh, the market's really good for 
flexibles right now, but I wouldn't see a reason for putting uh, someone like him out of the team. Like, one of the only decent areas for them, in my opinion. At least in the way he plays, but the thing is, now we have to wait and see how the code sort of manages him, and then how Faith comes into play with all of this, and whether they're gonna stick to the same pace, whether they're gonna sort of switch something about, uh, up about how Yun Monk's going to play. But uh, I think it should be more so centered around how uh, Myun Bong wants it to play out, unless the coach has something specific in mind, because I love how he can switch it up so, so quick in terms of just suddenly becoming this very, very offensive flex support. So, uh, yeah, it's just... Uh... One good thing, I'd say. Like it's it's a sad, sad way to put it, but uh, one place where I think they don't necessarily have a pre-existing problem. Mm, I think there's, I think there's some room here for Myeonbong to still work on his Batiste. I think his while well, we all know that his uh, Zen and Honor are quite good. I think his Batiste has not really been too much in the spotlight, um, especially considering how strong the hero was throughout last season and how impactful having a good Batiste was. Um, that's something that I would like to see him uh, really make his mark for uh, this season. Um, additionally, I think that, uh, again, double flex support is something that is, is possible and maybe even likely to happen. And they could probably pick up someone that could help them deal with that kind of meta. Because Faith is... Uh, pretty much a main support exclusive player. He's not really delving at all into the flex support part of it. So they probably need someone to play something like a Bap Zen or something like that. Um, even if Myun Bang Puk picks up the Zen in that comp, you still need a Bap player. So either you teach Myun Bang Bap or you just pick up a Bap player. Well, I think we just find, found out why they kept Color X then. <laughs> I was just oh. going to say that. <laughs> Some hit scan player to play BAP, and that's all you need. It's basically just soldier anyway. Yep, yep. But with better damage, X. Yeah. Alright, so... I mean, this might be a hot take coming from me, but... I think with respect to Myun Wong, I think he's definitely a really good Ana player. But... Um, I mean, it's it's not too hard to look impressive in a bad team if you're semi-decent and just playing better than them, right? Um, so I'm I'm not as high on him as uh, sorry, as most of most of the community is uh, but I don't think he's a bad player uh, I'm just keen on seeing how good he is with a good team, right? Uh, let's see if he can stand out uh, just as much as he did last year even with a better structure around him um, so yeah, I mean, you guys covered all of the other points about Myun Bong, so if you're okay with it, we can move on to the coaching stuff. I think there's just, just one thing I'd like to say. I think that, uh, I'm not sure if I agree with your, uh, statement of that it's easier to look better on a, on a better team. I mean, uh, on a worse team. Okay. Um, because you look at the complete opposite, like you look at, uh, Shanghai Dragon Season 1, Fearless looked like absolute garbage on that team. And uh, he pretty much had to exit the scene for Overwatch League um, until he was kind of redeemed with his uh, other performances uh, in Contenders and then back, uh, back on Shanghai. I think that it's not completely necessary that a good player will look... Uh, like a player will look better because they have bad players around them. Uh, it's just uh, something that you'll have to find out, I guess. Um, I think it's it's, it, it's possible that the Boston system is. I, I think the idea for Boston is just to not get boomed by the people who are already completely boomed by Boston. Mm. I think if they they fall into fusions and Myeonbong's like trap of depression um, about how bad the team was last year, that will kind of mess things up. I think the team has to keep a good mental and hopefully Lori and some of the other staff can help with that as well as the new faces on the team 
Mm -hmm. I think I was, I was just gonna add slide something to the statement you made. I also like, just like Nightwing, I didn't quite like agree 100% with the fact that uh, it's uh, easier to look good on a team that's just uh, underperforming so much. But for me, uh, the reasoning is a bit different because for me it's more role based and the way I think, uh, at least in uh, at least having seen or watched five years now, uh, that's half a decade. That wow, this game's gone on for quite quite long. For you know, we call it dead every day. But anyway, uh, I see DPS being the only capable players in terms of being able to stand out even when the teams aren't performing because it is a role that is intended or based around picks many times. Uh, we've seen that happen with Fleta initially. We've seen that happen with quite a lot of players. Uh, I think flex support on the other hand can be, uh, it, it can be even harder than sort of uh, main support to stand out on. So I think in that respect, Moonbong must have played out of his mind to look that good sometimes, really. Mm -hmm. So, because you know, if, if you don't have a decent main tank, if Fusion's just kind of doing the things he usually does now, uh, you're not gonna get much protection and uh, let me not even go to you know their off tank lineup the peel wasn't probably even in their dictionary so mm. for him to have shown himself to that extent regardless uh, I think props to him and I just uh, I'm hoping in this case that he doesn't disappoint me now because from what Prolius has said now, it's just kind of made me paranoid. Oh, oh what if I'm overrating him? Which I'm hope, <laughs> hoping I'm not, because uh, yeah, me neither. It's, it's always it's always exciting to you know sort of flex support is probably my favorite role to watch because it's just uh, it's not overlooked in the slightest. But at the same time, I just I'd I'd rather watch someone just pop off a of Nana any day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, the reason I said that it's easy for for him to look good on a bad team is primarily uh, primarily because he w he actually um was one of the players that made the least mistakes and made the most plays last year right so what i'm trying to say is if let's say you make 10 plays and nine of those plays have been made by myon bong then it's natural that he's going to look good because your team's not actually making plays otherwise mm -hmm. so that's all i was saying in that sense that uh, he he was so much better than the rest of his teammates that we could only see him doing all the work and that's why maybe he looked a bit he seemed to be a bit better than he actually is um so in that sense i think uh yeah like you said he's still an exciting player uh and i'm really keen on seeing if he performs better in this season but yeah if yeah, you if you're done with the supports, let's. T I want to uh, touch upon Lori a little bit, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. So again, exciting new coach coming in from WGS. He brought three of his players with him, which is I am thirty seven, Valentine, and Faith. Um, and that definitely is a, a, a good plus point for them, because you can't really underrate pre-existing synergy in the league, um, as witnessed by teams like the Vancouver Titans. Um, so he, I think he could pull off some impressive stuff with the players he's recruited because um, he he came in and he absolutely elevated WGS from being um, a bottom tier team to being a top level team. Uh, so if he can do the same with Boston, although it's definitely going to be harder considering it's the, the Overwatch League and not contenders, um, I think he could bring uh, make Boston be competitive in maybe 50% of the metas, if, if not more. Um, and I'm hoping that there are, there are no communication issues as well because some of these players have not been on mixed rosters before. Uh, I believe it's um, Faith and Valentine's first time being on a mixed roster. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I don't see players, for example, like Soon and obviously not I'm 37 having issues because they like I'm 37's bilingual and Soon and Fusions have been on a mixed roster before. Um, but I think the value Lori is going to bring to this team is massive because even when he came in, uh, I don't know if you guys read this, there was this article about the uprising, about how, how Lori came in and said, you know, do you guys still want to play for this team? I believe we can do something good. And then uh, Fusion, Spunk, Kalax, they all, you know, they agreed to stay. Um, so I'm really hopeful, I think, 
he's he's a really high value signing as a coach so yeah you guys can share your thoughts on that i think i think fusions is very emotional as a player that's something i rate very highly because uh it's it's good to have that sort of a personality in sport where you're just visibly upset when things go wrong it's yeah. it's no use to be you know every other person is this super self-conscious person not not you know it's not a bad thing it's not i'm not attacking people here but at the same time it's great to have someone who's just so passionate who'll just literally call anyone out including himself you can see fusions very upset on on camps like any time whenever something goes wrong which happens a lot for boston uh you can see it on his face you can see him you know banging his fist you can see that sort of like uh the commitment he has to the game i think uh lori did a great thing like you said by mm-hmm. sort of uh giving them a little sort of a mental exercise uh in is if if you put that sort of a question in front of someone whether or whether or not they want to stand up for something it's uh, very good for player development and it it's very easy to then single out the kind of people who want to make an effort so uh pre-existing synergies i swear to god if we say that phrase once more <laughs> now <laughs> i'll be so pissed but i have to say it uh three people with them coming into the team uh he's done actually quite well i i wouldn't say wgs phoenix is done bad they've, they've actually done quite quite well for uh, some team that is in you know em or runaway in recent years and mm-hmm. uh, at the same time uh i think having someone i i hope lori can sort of match uh hulk's personality in the sense that it's just uh i do not like dynamics in teams where the general manager is the only person who's just outspoken so i'm hoping he brings uh, a bit of a personality to the table a look of any sort to be fair because you just want to have a sense of authority you just want to be a person who's commanding and as long as he can do that i don't think coaching will be the biggest of issues mm-hmm. because there are some roster issues in there so yeah it's uh i i hope they like you know to be fair it's they should have made more pickups uh, at least uh in one of the departments but what's done is done and i think uh considering at least the wgs phoenix pickups and valentin and uh main support i can see this turning out to be the most exciting bit of news i've heard from boston since uh, well, uh season 1 stage 4 <laughs> wow well, that was <laughs> that was a ride. I tried to think of the last time I I felt like anything was interesting about Boston. And I'm not saying this because I've preferred NYXL, but that was a rivalry that I used to love back in the day, and it's just never been the same since the first season. Like if you look back at season 1, uh stage 3, it was the pinnacle of both teams where Boston had the, the perfect stage I think they won 10 out of 10 and then just lost the playoffs to NYXL the stage finals. It was just such a strong time for the team as a whole and now the dynamics just gone out the window they they resorting to different strategies. But I think Lore is very exciting for a coaching prospect, yes. I think I think that uh... I honestly genuinely hope that Lori is nothing like Huck um because Huck is is the kind of person that seems to be very official very uh on the business side of things I think the story that you told about um Lori asking these older players uh what they kind of want to do that that is quite promising I think that that shows that he is very much concerned about the kind of mental state of his players uh, to some extent and uh can really provide a different dimension to uh the care that these players need because esports is a taxing job and i think looking out for the mental health of your players is something that that's quite good and it helps in development to uh players that can actually be redeemable instead of just constantly boomed and washed up mm-hmm. um i think that uh the fact that lori does have some previous previous experience with the players that he's picking up is good um i am assuming that 
Huck did not pick up uh, soon all by himself. Um, that Lori did have some kind of sign off on that uh, because I would not like to see I'm 37 played over soon uh, just because of uh, pre existing preferences. Uh, but apart from that, I think from what you've described, I think Lori can be a good addition. It's just something that uh, we'll have to wait, wait and see. They've had success in contenders. Uh, hopefully, they can at least be a bit more redeemable than last season uh, as a whole uh, in Boston because their, their fans have kind of suffered enough, I think. <laughs> um, they Each year, Boston comes out with something that is promising but also something that is extremely disappointing. Uh, maybe this se- season they can at least be slightly below average or maybe even average and at least try and not be extremely disappointing. That, that's all I'm expecting from Boston. And I think Lori and the staff may be able to help with that. Mm-hmm. Alright, so I think if we are done talking about the players and the staff, um, I want to get your thoughts on where you think this team stands. I think we've already slightly hinted at where we think the team is roughly. Sorry about that, that's my pressure cooker. Um, but... Yeah, so I think overall, uh, this team's goal, like you said, Nightwing, is not to be garbage like they've been in the past two years. And I think they can certainly achieve that with this team. Some of the prospects are really promising, like especially Stan 1, Valentine, I think even Faith to some extent um, coming in uh, is, is, is really, uh, again... Really, bo- it really bodes well for this roster. So that that pressure cooker thing is going to happen again. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the overall uh, situation of the team. So you guys can go ahead and uh, pitch in. Don't worry, his pressure cooker is just really excited about Boston's prospects. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I think his pressure cooker is kind of emulating how Boston feels as an organization because it's just ready to burst. If they don't do anything this season, then I can just see, you know, it's. Uh, it's not like too far from falling apart as it was for me, but at the moment, uh, it's it's kind of crazy, you know. This entire thing, the the past half an hour, we've been talking about them. We haven't particularly picked them apart like we usually do with teams, and even then, we're saying, hey, best case scenario is probably a mid-table finish. So that tells you a lot about how Boston has been, and I just hope that improvement in general should be the goal. Uh, in their wildest dreams, top six, but that's I don't see it happening, and because there's just so many teams now, I can just you know see them having one rare high every now and then, and then just getting slapped by someone like Chengdu. So I I just <laughs> you you can't be that team, not in the Overwatch League, not for success. If they have a long term plan, sure, maybe you know the season after the coming season, they if they have positives to build on, but this season. Just middle of the pack would do fine. Just don't fall to the bottom three. Like, please, for the love of God, you you have something to prove. You've been a top caliber team once. And while you can't do it right now, just try to at least accomplish half of what you're meant to. So, yeah. Okay. And yeah. any, yeah, go on, Nightman. I pretty much agree. I think uh, Boston is a, an org that has. Uh, some amount of very dedicated fans, clearly. Uh, otherwise, they would not be sticking with Boston. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I think it would be quite disappointing if if this was another season that was a complete letdown. I think they have the tools that they need to at least be competitive. Um, and yeah, best case scenario is probably still only a um, mid-place finish. But in the Overwatch League, when skills are constantly growing, I think that's that's something that is... Still not still commendable. I think uh, as long as the management kind of has stuff under its reins, as long as they don't need to burn it to the ground like what Valiant seems to be doing um, yes. recently, uh, probably I have some hope for the team uh, to not be as bad as last year, and hopefully that's something we can see through because some of the players that they've signed and some some being veteran presences like Soon and. Uh, I don't want uh, Boston to be a, reti- a sad retirement home for soon. 
yeah. as some kind of last swan song uh, and i don't want to see plays like valentine uh, become unmarketable because of a horrible performance uh, because of other issues in boston um i'm expecting at least some amount of competitiveness from the team and hopefully we can see that through um yeah that's pretty much it all right i think we've all pretty much summed up what we feel about this team and their um their caliber going into the 2021 season uh so yeah i think we can end this episode on that note uh thanks to everyone who's watched uh, so far and there's more reviews to come for sure and uh, well, which team do you guys want to review next we haven't decided yet not the valiant right now uh, they they do yeah, they yeah. even have a team Yeah, they, yeah. uh i have no idea um who should we go with we've talked mostly about na team so far right yeah do you want to do nyxl or something oh you're, yeah. you're making one hp is ready now <laughs> one hp wants to do it now like oh yeah i'd do it right now like uh, i don't even care but no to be fair we we should take our time a day or two would do fine i'd be fine uh let's say tomorrow the day after if you want all right sure so yep you heard it here guys nyxl coming up next uh thanks once again for watching be sure to subscribe to be notified when we post that new york review um like this video if you enjoyed it and found our points at least somewhat valuable and be sure or to not. comment and share yeah <laughs> or not either way it, it's good for the channel right so yep go ahead hit that like button comment subscribe share do all the youtube stuff that can help us keep the conversation going about the overwatch league um thanks a lot and i'll we'll see you next time bye bye